We are targeting perorial black snapper as they are otherwise known on this episode of FCO Fishing NZ. The whole adventure searching for these vegetarian fish turns into a mystery and leaves us wondering what has happened to all the fish. You will be surprised where we end up catching our quarry. And Darren and his dive mates show us how to burly up a storm when you're spearing. Well today I'm with my good fishing buddy John Eichelsheim, or John Unpronounceable we sometimes call him, <laughs> but his mates just call him John E. Um, today John we're fishing for a fish and you called it, uh, described it as... Uh, well it's unappreciated. 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 That's, that's a good way to term it. Mm. We're fishing for what the Australians call Ludric, um, we call them Parori, and they're also called Blackfish and Sea Bream. And the interesting thing about them, they offer really great sport John. And there's lots of them Adam, lots Lo of them and nobody fishes for them and you know very entertaining fish. We're here, we're on the coast, um, east coast of uh, Auckland, just by Takapuna, and we're here to collect our bait for Perori. And John, you use a rather unusual bait. Yeah, I can't claim to have invented it, but um, I do what the Australians do, and I use a green weed as a bait. And that way I only catch Perori, I don't catch anything else. So this is a, a good way to ensure that you're getting the target species. That's a really good tip. So we're going to uh, gather some salad for our fishing today, uh, and it's the bait, not what we're going to put the fish on. But also what we're going to do, we're going to show you the techniques we use for perori fishing. And I tell you what, it's a great fish to introduce kids into fishing. And if you don't have access to some really hot fishing areas, perori are absolutely everywhere in the North Island. Anywhere there's a wharf, a bit of rocky coastline, a bit of weed, you've got a chance to catch them. Absolutely. Estuaries everywhere. Yep. And I tell you what, although yeah, they're great sport on light tackle, they're actually really good eating. And at the end of the show, I'm going to go home and I'm going to cook up a feed of perori for lunch. And John, you've eaten them, I've yep, eaten them. Yep, nothing wrong with them. They, they, wrong they get caught, called certain names that we won't uh, give you, but it's not very uh, nice about them. But the truth of the matter, although they eat weed, there are some things that pe put people off eating them, and we'll show you what they are, and, and we'll dispel the myths. Yeah, yeah. So join us as we go and uh, catch a few perori and have a fun day. It's blowing about 40 knots out there. You wouldn't go out in a boat today, but it's flat calm on the lee shore of the east coast. Perfect for perori fishing, perfect, John. Perfect, perfect. Let's get our salad. Excellent. I'm looking for the longer filaments, the weed with long filaments, like that's not a bad piece, but I've got some really nice ones here. And those are nice and long. They're going to be an, a lot easier to, um, to wrap around the hook because as you can imagine, you know, putting this on a hook is not easy. You actually have to wrap it around the hook. So I want these nice long filaments rather than uh, the clumpy ones. So I'm just looking on the edges of these rocks and you can see there's some quite good lengths of um, of algae here and, and that's the perfect bait for perori so I'm going to gather a bit of that and then some of that lesser weed that isn't quite so good as a hook bait but which will be fine to use as, as, a, as a ground bait we'll throw a bit of that in with a bit of sand and hopefully that will draw the fish to our fishing area. I see a little shrimp in the rock pool too John. <laughs> yeah well it's amazing I mean this only fills up when the tide's absolutely at the very top but obviously there's life in here do you, do you think the perori are actually eating the weed or the little invertebrates and stuff that uh, uh, live on the weed? Um, oh, I think they eat the weed. Uh, I've also caught them on, on flies, on, on green flies, so th there must be something in, in the colour of it. Uh, and it's interesting that this type of algae only seems to grow where there's some fresh water running across the rocks, or in this case where there's rainwater caught in the pools. Um, you don't see it further down towards the, the shore, so uh, a good place to look is anywhere where there's a bit of fresh water coming across the, the rocks, you'll find this type of green algae growing. Um, and again, the perori seem to gather around those areas to feed. I guess they come up with a high tide and, uh, and graze on this weed. They do the same in estuaries and places like that, so yeah, it's an interesting... Uh, you can actually see there's a little snail on there. That, that may be part of uh, what they're interested in as well. So, yeah. And you've got a nice little bait container there, John. A little bait container. Is, is it a salad bottle from the supermarket? <laughs> I, think, I think it is. <laughs> I just put some holes in the top, you know. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Um, look, we're probably not going to need a whole lot more than that. You don't need a lot of bait, eh? You don't need a lot. Um, for insurance sake, I might grab a little bit more. That's a nice piece. Don't want to have to come back after all. This is good stuff. You can find this weed in most rock pools and things like that. 
Do yeah. you have a bit of a look around? Yeah, most places. You'll find some some areas have, has lots of it, you know, and um, if there are a lot of perori around, what you will find is that it gets grazed really short and it's pretty difficult to gather. This is sort of above the line. No fish can really get into this particular pool, I don't believe, so this stuff's grown quite long. And I'm looking for this dark green colour too, that's quite important. The dark green works a lot better than the light green. So that, that's a nice dark green, that colour. So, all the things you didn't know about algae. Once we've gathered enough weed for our day's fishing, we set off to our fishing posse at Milford Marina on Auckland's North Shore. So John, putting weed on a hook, I'm not, not very familiar with that. Can you give us a demonstration of how to do it? Yeah, well, it's a bit of a um, imprecise science actually, Adam, but essentially I sort of start on the line and I, and I, I wrap it over one way and, and the other way. And then I just like to wrap it right around the shank of the hook. Sort of kind of like plaiting it? Almost like plaiting it because, you know, in, in the end, and that's sort of the effect that you want to get, which is... Natural. Quite natural. And that's it, that's a baited hook. If you like, you can put a little half hitch around the top of the weed if, if you want to, that's another option. Okay, I might do that because I like half hitches. Yeah. Coming up, <laughs> a surprise catch and a great dive. The fishing was slow with neither the weed nor fresh tuatuas attracting any attention apart from a few very greedy sprats. I was starting to have my doubts about John's fishing spot. Here we go. That's probably a bit of fish. Yeah. There's a fish, what's yeah, that? There's a fish, it looks like oh, oh, yes. it's, it's, it's a, it's oh, a it's flounder. A flounder. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Are you Are you that, John? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring him up here. Yeah, oh, very that. good. <laughs> well, there's something you don't do every day. We're <laughs> fishing for perori, and because we're using light tackle and nice, delicate baits, I've actually caught a beautiful flounder. Marinas are a good place to go fishing for perori. Uh, where you're allowed to fish, of course, and this marina you're allowed to fish. But it, the, it's full of weed, there are piles, there are boats that haven't got, and their bottoms haven't been cleaned for a while, so there's plenty of grazing because perori are grazers primarily. Um, you'll see when you look at their teeth that they're, they're made for grazing rather than for eating flesh. So yeah, the, it's a perfect sort of environment for them and they'll come in on the tide and uh, you know, most marinas, even the ones where you're not allowed to fish, if you look carefully underneath the, the jetties, underneath the piles, you'll see perori moving around and sometimes you'll actually see them feeding. They'll be grazing hard against the pylons. So that's what we're hoping for here, is that, that there'll be fish moving through this area that, that we can target with our weed baits. Yep. What you got this time? Well, I think a little, yes, a little perori. A little perori, <laughs> yay, we finally got a perori in the swim. <laughs> Well, oh. that's probably the smallest one I've seen. But I should photograph that yep. once you've done your thing. Well, this is the target species, a perori, but this is a very, very small one. Yeah, they don't come much smaller than this. So I'll start with a baby and work my way up to a big one. But I'll let this fella go as quickly as possible. When I quizzed John about this spot, he said on an average day he would catch three or four kilo-sized perori in an hour or two's fishing. Obviously, this wasn't an average day. You sod! Why can I not hook them, guys? No idea. Oh, you can oh, there's a touch. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Now that was a positive bite, John. Same deal? Yep, nobody home. Mm. That's the weed bite. Oh, there we go. Yes. Yep, hook up. There we go, John. Oh, you're getting a bite on your other one. I'll better catch that you for did, you. You did that one. Oh, there we go. Double hookup. Oh, mine fell off. <laughs> uh, slightly bigger than you've been getting at them. Yeah. 
but it is the right species. Definitely. You're having fun with that long rod? Yes, and fortunately I've got a long net. <laughs> so there we go. Have a look at this one, John. Yes. Slightly larger. Slightly, not, not a big one yet, though. This might be why we're having such trouble hooking them, Adam. Over the next couple of weeks, I fished a variety of good perori spots and caught very little. I was starting to wonder if the weed was not working or had I just lost my fishing mojo. Where were all the perori and why couldn't I catch any? Paul Marlin is a very good Spiro. Today he's going to show you how easy it is to shoot snapper off a well laid ground bait. Kinner is a great way to start the ground bait. Paul also uses a fish, but generally a few kinner is all that you require. The blue mau mau are often a good indication of a good fishy spot. Snapper can be found under schooling fish. This is all looking really good. Notice how Paul approaches the edge slowly. His ground bait is located just over it. This is the sign of a good Spiro. No hurried shot. This fish will come back. See how he waits patiently. Here it comes. Paul's patience pays off. Again, Paul shows his skill waiting for the fish to turn a little before pulling the trigger. A front on head shot can result in a spare deflection. They've got very hard heads. Paul's real gun means he can let this fish run while he surfaces. Having a reel on your gun means you don't need a float line attached. Hug a fish against your body to control it. Down below, fish are still on the burly feeding. While I'm down, Paul has reloaded and nailed another good fish. It came right up and ate burly at his fin tips as he was cutting it up. Not to be outdone, Sam has taken a reasonable snapper as well. The burly is really working. Sam has put his hand over the snapper's mouth. This is not advisable. They do bite. The blue mau mau are getting thicker. Paul uses them as cover. This can be good and bad. Sometimes you can't see what's on the other side. Note how Paul swims on an angle away from the edge. This is to not give himself away to any snapper below. There are fish everywhere. We need to be vigilant. Paul removes his snorkel from his mouth. This ensures no bubbles will alert fish to his presence. With slow movements, fish don't get too concerned with our approach. This guy kept a close eye on what we're up to. He looks mean, but is harmless. There are still lots of snapper, and the odd kingfish. With a feed secured, we can now take time to take it all in. This is diving at its best. 
Paul shows with a bit of patience and again skill, he gets the right shot. It certainly makes my job very easy on camera when you've got a very competent Spiro to follow. Great shot on a fleeing fish. Coming up, the mystery of the missing Perori is unraveled. As a last resort, I tried one of my old secret spots. Well, I've hooked up, but yet again, just a little juvenile fish. I don't know what's going on. Everywhere we go, we, we go to some, some of the best perori fishing spots in Auckland and all we can catch is these little fish. So I don't know what's going on. Well, all of a sudden, I found the spot that's got Perori. I have to go down the stairs to land this one. They're getting bigger. They're slowly getting bigger. Still not a big one, but at least I'm getting bites and hooking fish. They go to about uh, four kilos per ori, a real, real big one, averages about a kilo. So this one's just about half a kilo. We were not the only ones looking for a feed in this estuary. size perori. Just on a kilo, that's a perfect eating fish. Now if you hear a bit of traffic in the background, that's because we're fishing exactly opposite State Highway 1 near the Northern Toll booth. And this is the Wendaholm River. And a lot of people wouldn't even stop to think to fish here, but look what we're catching. Right beside the road, main highway, middle of Auckland. You can see the perori has quite an unusual mouth. These sort of raspy little teeth here is what they use to um, graze on the weed. And they're sort of like mini teeth or little files. But they're definitely vegetarians. One of the reasons people get put off eating perori is the black stomach lining. And also they may have tainted the flesh when filleting the catch. Here I demonstrate what happens when you cut through the rib bones into the gut. If you do fill it this way, make sure you cut away the rib bones and the black stomach lining and wash the fillets in salt water straight away. It's far better to fill it over the rib bones and not damage the gut cavity at all. Don't know what's going on with all these little fish, not a lot of big ones. But hey, I've got a couple of keepers, so let's go home and uh, I'll show you how we cook up a feed of perori. Now one thing about perori, it's actually got a very delicate white flesh, not dissimilar to flounder. So it's pretty important to put a coating on it. So what I've done is I've already pre-prepared my perori by coating it in flour, egg, and then panko breadcrumbs, which is Japanese breadcrumbs, and then I've put it back in the fridge to chill. I don't think you need to see that. Everyone knows how to sort of dip it in flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. But the next tip 
we're honouring the weed eater, and what I'm going to do is toast up a little bit of nori, which is seaweed that you wrap your sushi in, to sprinkle over the top. So I'll do that now. One of the tricks that's pretty damp out here today is just to toast it over here and not burn it. Use a pair of tongs and just hold it over the um, flame. It toasts up very, very quickly and it will go crunchy. If you put it too close to the flame, it will actually burn and shrivel up into nothingness. Toasting nori like this gives it a very, very quite strong taste of the sea and the weed. And I think uh, with a, f a fish like perori, which is fairly delicate, it's nice to have that little bit of uh, taste. And obviously it's seaweed, so perori, gotta love it. Right, I've toasted my nori, and when you take it off the heat, it goes beautiful and crunchy. So it's got a nice textural element. And then I'm just gonna break it up in this little pot here. Try a bit now. Mm. Really unique flavour. I've got some rice bran oil in a pan here and you want it to be at about 170, 180 degrees approximately. So not super smoking hot, but hot enough so that when the panko breadcrumbs hit the pan, they will sizzle immediately and seal. My oil's just about ready, so let's put them in and start cooking up a rory. Perfect, nice sizzle. I've cut the perori into sort of what I would call little portion sizes. That should be nicely browned on one side. Beautiful. It takes on a really nice dark colour. Minute and a half, two minutes on that side and it'll be ready. Looking absolutely divine. I'll just dab it off on a paper towel, shake off any excess oil. Now I'm not going to season it because the uh, seaweed has quite a bit of seasoning. So what I'm doing is I'm going to now put it on a bed of a herb we call sorrel, which is really good with fish because it's um, quite lemony. So it's got that citrus thing. And then I'm going to top it with some of my toasted nori. Next touch is I've got some ponzu sauce, which basically is Japanese word for citrus sauce. And it's very easy to make. You just use uh, Japanese style soy sauce, lemon juice and a little rice wine vinegar. And that's got another nice citrus note with a bit of salt as well, hence why I'm not seasoning my fish. I'll just drizzle a bit of this over it. Not too much, it's quite strong. And the final touch, some yum yum mayonnaise, Japanese mayonnaise. So I tell you what, there's nothing wrong with this. You look at the flesh, it's beautiful and white. It's delicious to eat and, you know, great fun to catch. If I served this in a restaurant, people wouldn't know the difference from Snapper. We discovered the answers to the mystery to where all the big perori had gone. Darren was diving one of the islands in the Haraki Gulf where he found good numbers of big fat perori that were busy getting ready to spawn. So although not scientific research, I think it's pretty safe to say perori usually spawn in late spring or early summer, so the fishing in estuaries and harbours would be best from December to October.